In this lesson, we look at the volume of, of a cone and the relationship that a cone has with a cylinder is that if you have a cylinder that's the same height as a cone, so I'll take this cone and I'll try and draw a cylinder that is the same height as it. And it's about here. So if you've got this cylinder and it's the same height as this cone over here, it takes three cones to fill this cylinder. So if you had a cylinder full of, you know, popcorn or something, and you fill it all up with this popcorn, and then you dump it in the cylinder, it would go about one third of the way through. So the relationship that a cone has to a cylinder is that it's one third of the cylinder. It takes three cones to fill a cylinder of the same height and base radius. So with that relationship, we can say that the volume of a cone is one-third big BH. Remember, big B stands for the um, area of the base. If we're talking about a cone specifically, we could say pi, or I'm sorry, one-third pi r squared h, and pi r squared h is the area of the cylinder. And then one third would be the relationship that the cone has with the cylinder. So let's do some practice. We have to find the volume of the cone and we're gonna round to the nearest tenth. So the first thing that you always do when you have a formula question is you write the formula. V equals one third pi r squared h. And then the second thing that you do is you plug in what you know. So I don't know the V. Uh, pi, I'll use 3.14. The radius, be careful, the radius here is 2. It is not 4 because there's the radius and the height is 6. So calculator's powered up. We have to follow PERMDAS. 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to bring everything else down. And here's how you multiply something by one third. You don't type in 0.3 or 0.33 or 0.333 or 0.3333. Or 0 you multiply it all by one and then divide by three. So essentially, I'm making all of these fractions and I'm treating it like I would multiplying fractions. One times this times this times this. And then over three times one times one times, which is just three. So do not multiply by that annoying rounded decimal value. So 1 times 3.14 times 4 times 6 is 75.36 divided by 3 because that's what I would get in the denominator. And when you do that division, you'll get 25.12, so rounded to the nearest tenth is 25.2. Now we're talking volume, so we're talking about cubic meters. So we're talking about raised to the third power. Remember the exponent does not relate to the number, it relates to the dimension of the label. The label is a three-dimensional label. Now one of the reasons why you should always start with writing your formula is because stuff is not always all on the same side. So if you look in these examples, we're actually given the volume and we have to work backwards to find a missing dimension. So I'm going to write down my formula, V equals one-third pi r squared h, and I'm going to plug in what I know. 956 equals pi is 3.14. The radius is 9, and I don't know the height. So I'm going to do all of this math right here, and then when I get all that simplified, then I will inverse. You could do lots of inverses here, but it's more complex for me, so I'm going to just do um, order of operations first. So that's going to be 1 third times 314 times 9. I'm sorry, nope, 81. times height. Now I'm going to multiply all of these pieces and remember I'm not going to use 0.33 I'm going to do 1 times 3.14 times 81 and then I'll divide that by 3. It will give me a more exact value. So I've got 956 equals 84.78 H. 
Now all I have to do is one inverse divide by 84.78. And so that gives me that h is equal to 11.276, etc. When I round to the nearest tenth, I get 11.3. So the answer is 11.3, and we're talking feet. And this is not volume, and it's not area, so it's just a linear measurement feet. If you want to try the second example on your own, feel free to do so. First thing, again, I'm going to write the formula. V equals 1 third pi r squared h. So now I plug in what I know. I know that the V is 7200. 1 third pi r is 15. And I don't know the h. So I'm going to do all of these calculations and then do inverses. So if I, oh, whoops, I have to do exponents first. So I've got 7200 equals 1 third times 314 times 15 squared is 225 times h. Now I have to pretend like I'm multiplying all these fractions. 1 times 3.14 times 225, and then all of that gets divided by 3. I get 7200 equals 235.5H. My last step is to do inverses. And I get that H is equal to rounded to the nearest tenth is 30.6. So that's 30.6 and it's yards and it's not squared or cubed because it's not volume or area. So this is a picture of one of those timers that um, like an hourglass or something but it's not a whole hour. It's just a small timer and so like let's say this family is playing a board game at home and this is the timer that they use and they have to solve questions bef um, before the time runs out. So the sand is falling at a rate of 50 cubic millimeters per second. So if I can figure out how many cubic millimeters there are in here, cubic millimeters is a trigger word for volume, then I can figure out how many seconds you have. Now normally the directions would just say how many seconds it gives you, but this is one of those math tricks where they don't tell you and you have to figure it out. So now they actually give you more measurements than you need. You're only trying to find the volume of the sand. So you're only going to use the 10 and the 24. This 30 is really not necessary. It just tells you how wide the timer is, but it's not relevant to the amount of sand right now because the sand only has a radius of 10. So I'll write the volume of my cone, 1 third pi r squared h, and now I'm going to plug in what I know. I don't know the volume. Um, the radius is 10 of the sand. The radius would be 15 if it were the whole timer, but it's not. It's 10 because it's the sand. And the height of the sand is 24. So 1 third, 3.14 times 100. And now I just have to grab my calculator. Remember, we're treating these like fractions. 1 times 3.14 times 100 times 24 is 7,536. When you divide that by 3, you get 2,512. So 2,512 cubic millimeters is the volume of the sand. But this isn't the answer. This is just the volume of sand. I want to know how many seconds I have to answer the question. So they tell me back up earlier that it falls at a rate of 50 cubic millimeters per one second. So I can solve a proportion to find out how many seconds it's going to take me if I have 2,512 cubic millimeters. So solve this proportion. And you get about 50 seconds. So you've got a little under a minute, 50 seconds, 50.24, um, I'm just rounding, 50 seconds uh, to answer the question. 
If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.